the next uh, TED talk is a, a presentation um, and by you. It's called Working for a Municipality. And I believe you're going to explain a bit more what it's like to work for uh, a governmental body like the municipality. So good luck and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, good to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to freestyle a little bit today and see what also you, uh, qu what questions you have and I will uh, jump on that. And um, I will talk about my experience uh, after um, VHC or I don't think I should say VHC anymore, but <laughs> forgive me when I say way I say, um, to where I am now, uh, which is um, four years after graduating. I uh, graduated in 2018. Um, and when I started back in 2014, I had this really clear image in my mind. Uh, I wanted to do something in the development aid sector, NGOs. I wanted to work for that because I've done some mission trips and voluntary work and I really loved it. Um, and I really wanted to share um, what I had with people who didn't have it. So I really wanted to do um, Minnesota Owners College because there was a really close link to it as well. So that's why I uh, actually started doing this study. And I've worked four years on that topic. I've um, specialized in global health and civil society, which were two um, focus points that um, link closely to the subject. So, hi. <laughs> um, I did... Um, uh, projects and internships at several organizations, uh, also NGOs, and I, um, I liked them at the time. But I got to that point in my fourth year where I had to do my final internship, and the internship itself was nice. But afterwards, I was like, do I really want to do this? I've spent four years working towards this goal of working for an NGO or something else in that um, area. But I s started having doubts. Is this what I want to do? Um, is this what I want to do right now? Maybe I'll, I'll go into uh, that field later, but I didn't, didn't feel right doing it directly after the uh, graduation. So I started thinking, what do I want? I started applying for different jobs in hospitals, um, high schools, universities. Um, it was really hard to find a job for me back then because I was just fresh out of, um, out of the study. Um, but I think it's a sign that none of those worked out for me. Um, I started working for a health insurance company um, half a year after I graduated and I wanted to work there because it's something entirely different from an NGO or um, a business, uh, commercial business. Uh, it's a health insurance which is also kind of commercial but uh, still different. I really wanted to experience just what it was like to be in a totally different setting from what I was used to and what I thought I would be doing, just to experience if it's something for me. Um, it's not, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> luckily, it was only a, a job for a few months. I think after five months, uh, it was over and I was glad about it. Uh, it's not the kind of um, atmosphere I want to be in. I had to um, keep track of everything I did, at what time I, I got into the office, at what time I got out, how many cases I um, filed or how much work I did. And it's not the style I want to be working in. I want to work on a specific goal I have, specific task, and do it my way, not care about how much time I put into one case, but I just want to do that one case right. And that was more important for me, quality over quantity. And um, towards the end of that job, I, uh, I found a job opening at the municipality of Steenwerkerlands, which is a little north from Zwolle. Maybe you guys know Gieterhorn or uh, Blokzeil, De Weerebe. Uh, it's a beautiful municipality, a beautiful environment. We have two national parks. And Giethoorn is, of course, a very popular place um, internationally as well. Um, and I found a job there, and it's called Medewerker Dienstverlening. You cannot get it any more unclear as that. Um, but it stated, your job is to focus on improving services that we as a municipality provide to our inhabitants or our uh, businesses. So you can do anything, basically, if it as long as it improves our services. So uh, I applied for it and I remember going in there and seeing four people, blank faces. I could not get anything from them. Did they like my, um, my talk, my, my pitch, my presentation of myself? And I walked out there thinking, well, this is probably it. Another uh, <laughs> rejection. 
Uh, but I got a call the same afternoon. I, um, I was invited for a second interview and um, so that I had to prepare a presentation. They gave me data from a uh, research they did and I had to present what I would do with that data. And I remember thinking, um, cool assignment, but I want to do it my way. I want to do it the way I think I can get the most out of it. And um, I did it my way and I got into those those rooms and I had the same three to four people in front of me again, blank faces again, and I presented my pitch and I walked out the same way. It's probably nothing. But I also remember thinking to myself, this is the way I want to do this work. And if they don't appreciate my way of doing that, I don't want to work there because it's not the right environment for me. I want to be appreciated for the work I do in the way I want to do it. So I walked out again, same afternoon I got a call that I got the job. So party, let's go for it. And uh, that's why I s uh, how I started working for the municipality. It's a new job uh, back then in um, 2019, so a year after I graduated I started there. A new job which means it was open for a little uh, different interpretation, uh, something new that they wanted to try out. So I had uh, room to give it my own swing which was really cool. Uh, and as I told you, it's about improving services we have. So, um, for example, you all probably have a driver's license or a passport, and after 10 years, you have to get a new one, which is basically the main reason why any of you would visit the municipality. Some people visit the municipality more often or get in touch with them when they want to have a permit for building uh, their house or building um, um, an extra... Um, garage, um, but there's also the part of um, the social work. So there's uh, youth services, there's um, uh, care, it's not the health care as in hospitals, but it's care for people who want to live at home, for example. Um, there's also the taxes, which probably you are familiar with too. <laughs> um, so there's a lot going on at the municipality and all of that is service we provide as a municipality to our inhabitants. So services is not only the part where you get your passport, but it's also the part where we answer the phone, where we um, put all our information we have on the internet. And people come to us with so many different questions and in so many different ways. So that makes my job a lot of fun because it's so different. Um, that's in a nutshell what I do. Today I want to talk to you about two different projects that I work on. Uh, the first is uh, data making data um, visual, um, showing people what we do, what we have, and um, trying to find improvements in that data. And the other part is clear communication, which is basically a very big question in all of the government, but also other parts of um, the corporate life and the NGOs. Um, because a lot, a lot, a lot of people cannot understand the uh, language we use municipality uses or other companies use in their letters, in their emails, in their regular communication, which is a real problem uh, that gets people into debts, for example. So I want to talk to you about those two things. Um, I want to start with the data part, and um, I will explain we have two types of uh, needs. It's reasons why we want to use data. The first is that we want to um, hear from our customers what they think about the service we provide to them. Um, because if we don't know what, what their experience has been, how do we know what to change? Because for us, or for the people who are behind the, the counters, it's every day the same. But if, um, if they're not telling the right information, or if they're um, lacking some um, um, emotional support for difficult questions or for uh, touchy subjects, um, we want to know that because we can improve that. So that's one reason of doing it. We want to understand what our uh, customer thinks. Um, and the other part is we have a lot of data inside our organization about our cases. How long does it take to finish our cases? Um, what kind of cases do people bring in? Um, can we maybe uh, visualize that and see if we can get something out of the way before it, is it becomes a case? Um, and in that way, you can eliminate a lot of problems. 
So that's the two parts, and um, I work on those two parts uh, differently. And I want to show you today um, some visuals I make. Uh, it's not rocket science, but I just want to inspire you and um, see if it can help you maybe in your work, in your organization, in your study, to really think about what does our data tell us and what can we do with it. So I will plug in my cable now. gone now. But I won't enlarge it. Here it is. Where's my here? Can you all read it? I think so. Um, this is the dashboard we dashboard we use for internal data. So we try to get um, uh, to try to visualize uh, what cases we have, for example. And this is maybe a very tangible or understandable one for you. Uh, we call it um, a melding and overbought Ruimte for those who are Dutch. Um, if there's um, a lamppost which is uh, broken, doesn't give light, you can um, make one of those meldingen for the municipality so they know to fix it. You can do it for roads. You can do it. Um, which is right there. You can do it for um, trees or animals, dead animals on the site. Um, you can do it for basically anything which is out in the open and in which the municipality is um, uh, the, the owner, so to say. So what you see here is um, those cases that we've gotten over the frame of two years, uh, which are 266 in one specific area. Stay right rest, as it's now called. Um, in this way, we visualize what kind of um, cases we have in, in that area. So you can see there's a lot of um, uh, problems with uh, dumpings of, of trash, uh, either next to the trash can where you have to hold your pass in front of it so they don't have to pay, they just place it there, or they just throw it in, in the water or throw it in um, on the side of the street. A uh, lot of problems in that regard in that area. Paths, roads, uh, but also plants, trees, those are, are high up in that area. And then you can also see which kind of, um, what streets the most problems are on. So if we want to know what problems should we get out of the way, we want to filter on a specific um, topic, for example, trees. And then we can see there's one specific road in which there have been three cases, something about threes, trees, maybe uh, a branch is has been on the road after a storm, or maybe the trees are sick and they start uh, crumbling. Um, and it's not very um, specific right now, these, there's one and two and three, which is not a lot, so you cannot say much about it. But if there's a bigger issue, such as the, the dumpings, you can really see where our um, where very popular streets are for those dumpings. And we can think about, are there any ways in which we can um, uh, make sure that does that doesn't happen again? What can we do about it? Uh, maybe there people place their bags right beside the bin uh, instead of inside it and paying for it. So maybe we shouldn't leave any open space there beside the bin, so people just simply cannot put it there. Um, I'm just saying something. Um, those kind of solutions we want to find out by using this data. But then we can also see in what kind of problems are in which streets. So uh, on this specific street, there's a lot of problems with the roads. So we can um, make around and see for ourselves where bad places in the roads are, instead of having people tell us and then we're one step behind. So this is one way uh, in which we um, process our internal data and make it visual for ourselves, for the internal organization. But what's even more important in my experience is um, what people see on the outside, because we can make these nice visualizations and we can say all is well, all is good. But it's not what the inhabitant sees. They see their problems and they hear what they hear on the phone. So we want to know what do people think about that 
So that's why every half a year we make these overviews. There's a lot of text in them. You don't have to read it right now. But this is pure, um, purely for external use. So we uh, give this to the uh, town council. We provide this all over the internet. We want people to see, we hear you. We're asking you, how are we doing? What was your experience with us? And um, we want to improve that. So there's a lot on here. And there's a lot of data underneath it as well. So you see a lot of grades uh, in every, almost every um, part of this um, dashboard. Um, and we, we get those grades by sending um, customer service surveys, for example. After they hang up the phone, they can get a survey. And a lot of people don't fill them in, but the people that do, they give us really valuable information. Um, because they, um, they might say, uh, I've been transferred to another of your colleagues. And the first one, she was really kind and transferred me really quickly. But the second one, he didn't really understand my problem or he couldn't help me. Um, and then we know that person might need help with finding the answer to that problem. But we also do it for, let's pick one, the um, Bali Zook. I'm out of words. Yeah, service desk, so when you get your passport, for example. Um, we also ask them if people have been there and they've made an appointment, they we have their email address and we can send them an, an, uh, a survey and we can ask them, hey, what did you think about it? And we have done a lot with those outcomes because people say, I get there by car because our municipality is so big, people cannot cycle everywhere. We get there by car, but we cannot park our car anywhere. So we know we have to do something about that. But that's why we switch the entrance of the municipality, of the town hall, from the back to the front. And the back parking space is, is mostly for um, uh, co-workers, for colleagues. And that's why people cannot find a parking spot there. But if we change the entrance to the front, we can make a smaller parking place, but only for people who are there for one or two hours. And that way, people can still find a parking place and don't have to walk a lot. So those are some things that we found out of, um, of that questionnaire. Um, but beside that, there's also the internal data. So this was the topic that I showed you the other dashboard about, which also shows how many cases there are and the percentage of the cases which has been completed in time. So we set a time frame for ourselves and we want to know, has your case been um, finished by that time frame? 74% um, was finished, which is below our goal. Our goal is 80%. Um, so we know we have to step up our game on that. And then we go back to the data and we see which kind of subjects are below the average. Where do we need to focus our attention on? Um, so in this way, we also present to our inhabitants, to our council, um, what do we do and how do we do it? Which can sometimes also give critics, but you need critics to improve yourself. And there's a lot of improvement that can, can be done. So it's really cool to be able to receive that information from other people. I'm going to plug it out again. Um, the second part that I wanted to talk to you about was clear communication. Uh, which is a really big problem in all kinds of organizations. But in the government, it's now very uh, a hot topic. So we signed a deal uh, a year ago saying that as a municipality, we want to focus on clear communication. We're going to do everything about it. So right now we are um, giving trainings to our colleagues um, how to write simply. And it's not just l using simple language, but it's also short sentences and making sure that the message you want to get across is in the beginning of your letter, for example. Those are all kinds of things that can help people understand the, the letter better. Because what do you think when you get a less letter from the municipality? You probably think something's wrong, right? I either have to go renew my passport, or I built something that I needed a permit for, or I have to pay taxes. Most of the time it's not really positive. So if you open that letter and you're already a bit hes hes hesitant, what do you think when you read the letter and y all these difficult words and long sentences and, and, and difficult words start, start appearing and you don't know what to do? Do they ask something from me? Um, 
do I have to go somewhere? Do I apply for something? And how do I do it? And then it says, you can go to the website, but maybe people are old and they don't know how to use a computer or don't know how to use the website or apply for something online. Um, which also means give them your phone number, tell them you can also call instead of only doing everything online. Um, so those are all parts of clear communication. Clear to you might not be the same clear to you, which is why we need to make it for a broader uh, public. So we give trainings. We started a test panel, which is a group of inhabitants. I think there are 70 now. And we can send them letters. And they can just tell us, this is so unclear, difficult word. Don't use that. I miss this kind of information. And we get a lot of information from that. And we renew our letters. It's not a very quick process. But it's also showing our inhabitants and our council that we are working on it, that we are really listening to the people that we serve. So by using data, by using panels such as uh, the test panel I talked about, uh, we really listen to our customers because municipalities are kind of in a luxury position. We are necessary. People don't get to choose for us. I, I live here in Zwolle, for example, and I think, hmm, maybe Enschede has a good way of uh, renewing my passport. Maybe they're quicker than Zwolle. But you cannot choose. You have to go to your own municipality. So we're kind of in a, in a luxury spot where people cannot say, I'm just going to another one. They have to be at your place. And if you don't have a good reputation or if you're slow, people, they come to you already with one step behind. And we want to get that out of the way. We want to know that people can, can say to us what they want, um, that they can come to, come to us if they have questions. We are not hiding behind walls. We are not hiding behind difficult words and languages. We want to be approachable. So that's what we're trying to show our people, and uh, that's why we're trying to incorporate as many inhabitants in our improvements as uh, necessary and as needed. Um, and, and circling that all back to our study, which was global projects and change management, um, I do a lot of different small projects, m getting all that data and changing it. Um, as I said, uh, changing the entrance from the back to the front, which is a huge project because it also has to do with um, creating the entrance and creating waiting spaces. That's a whole different big project, but there are also small projects. If people say, um, this is a blue zone, I have to use my, um, um, what's it called, the parking uh, clock? I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> but I don't have one in my car, then we know we have to put some at the desk so that people can come get them. Um, very short projects, really. Um, but they are projects, and they are definitely change management because we research what are we doing now, how are we doing it, and where do we want to go? Where do we want to be? So we look at other municipalities and we say, Enschede is doing it right, or Zwolle is doing it right, and we contact them and we just ask them, how are you doing this? Because we are not competing against each other, we have to work together. So the study Global Project and Change Management, it's not necessarily global for a municipality, but there is project and change management. And it's really important that um, people realize that it's not only big commercial firms that can offer project management, but it's also municipalities and other governmental organizations that are really in need of some fresh air from, from young people, and some, some technical aspects that maybe um, are not in, the, in, the, in those people, those colleagues of, of 50 plus ages. Um, let's get those young people in and renew those government organizations. Let's get some fresh air in and listen to your customers. And I, even if you don't work for municipality, I think what I just told you, you can do it in every organization and every organization can improve from it because you exist for your customers. So why not ask your customers how you're doing and what you can improve. Your customer is king. And I think we can use that in every, um, every sector. So um, that's the way I add value to a municipality. But I know more people who work for municipalities and they do it in a totally different way. And that's all OK. Um, we all have our own talents and our own um, ideas behind it. I, I get enthusiastic from using data. Other people might get enthusiastic from talking to people and listening to them. Um, and in that way, I want to say the municipality and the government is so broad. It's not only passport. It's not only building permits. Um, it's so interesting there. So if you're really 
like me wondering what direction should I go in, just maybe think about governmental organizations um, because they're interesting and there's a lot to do. Um, and definitely with our study and our background, um, it's a good place to work at. Um, I don't know if, if any of what I told you uh, inspired you or if you have any questions about it. Um, I'm open for a discussion or anything. Leon? No, I'm making the Power BI dashboard. Uh, she asked how people, uh, if they report those cases, how do they get into the dashboards? And when people report them, they either call us or they go to our website and they can type or, or tell us what the problem is. And we got it into our whole big system. And the big system just gives me a whole bunch of data. And the data I use as input for the dashboards. So I'll be the one um, seeing what types of uh, columns from that whole big data sheet I have to use to fill the dashboard. Yeah. Please. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes there are specific uh, colleagues for that. Uh, it's, th it's their job to, as I told you, uh, change the entrances. Um, but um, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes we hear from people, why can I only apply for something at the desk, at, at the town hall? Why can I not do it online? And then we're like, yeah, sure. Um, why, really? Why do we do it that way? So we try to digitalize everything as well. And um, that's what I do too. I start to talk uh, about, uh, talk to the colleague who's responsible for that subject. And we start thinking about how can we offer that online as well? So those are, it differs per, per problem, so to say. Uh, Just the last question before we uh, round off. Please go um, ahead. Is there a piece of data or a subject that you are not having right now but you really want to know about? You want to think about it and want to present that? Yes. Uh, I would like to know more per um, a colleague um, because I think you can make a lot of changes um, if you know who is behind the, um, the grade, for example. And I really want it to be a safe environment. I don't want to go to people and like, you got a two out of ten, so you're bad. I don't want to. I don't want to be like that. But it's, um, I think it's a gift if people tell you what you can improve, uh, because people get happy if they talk to you and, and you did it well. Um, so I really want to know more about if people have had a bad experience. Who was behind it? And then we can talk about um, what the experience was and how we can change it for the next time, for example. So that's a big, uh, big wish I still have. Yeah. Good question. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Was uh, I on time? <laughs> you were on time. Okay. So uh, applause. <laughs> Perfect. The next uh, TED Talk and the final one of today is in uh, five more minutes. It will be Rafat, and he will be talking about a journey to uh, uh, an unknown future. I think it's in Dutch. So uh, for all the English-speaking people, I'm so sorry. <laughs>